Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video I will show you how to name alkene compounds. Before we name alkenes, we have to understand what is the functional group in this molecule. An alkene is a molecule that has a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, or a pi bond between two carbons, is sp2 hybridized, and has a bond angle of 120 degrees at the alkene functional group. If you analyze the hydrogen deficiency, you'll realize that every pi bond gives you one deficiency, and therefore the standard alkene follows the formula of CnH2n, as opposed to an alkane, which follows the formula CnH2n plus 2. This hydrogen deficiency, or degree of unsaturation, comes from the fact that when you add a double bond or a second bond between two carbon atoms, every carbon now has five bonds, and so you have to remove two hydrogens to keep each carbon within the octet rule. You can have a molecule that has multiple pi bonds. As long as the pi bonds are between different sets of carbons, it still qualifies as an alkene. But don't confuse a diene with a molecule that has two pi bonds between the same two sets of carbons giving you an alkyne rather than a diene. When it comes to naming an alkene, we follow the same rules that we introduced in the first video. However, we'll use the last name of ene rather than ane when naming the parent chain. Let's start with a simple example. In this case, the entire molecule is my parent chain, and I have the option to number it from the left or from the right. When I number from the left, I hit the double bond on carbon number 2. When I number from the right, I hit the double bond on carbon number 4. If there are no higher priority substituents, you want to make sure that the double bond gets the lowest number, and so we have to number from the left. Since I have six carbons in this molecule, I get a first name of hex. Having a double bond gives me a last name of ene, and I have to specify where that alkene occurs. Since the pi bond occurs between carbons 2 and carbons 3, we'll use carbon 2 because that is the first or lowest number where the double bond occurs. Since I have nothing else on the molecule, I have a final name of 2-hexene. However, you may sometimes see this molecule written as hex-2-ene. This is just another way to show that the ene occurs at carbon number 2. When you have a simple molecule, it is preferred to keep the number in the front. However, when you have multiple substituents, it is better when each number precedes the substituent or functional group that it defines. Let's try another example. In this case, and recognize that I can number from both the left or the right to hit the double bond at carbon number 2. However, in this molecule, I also have to count for my substituent. If I number from the left, the methyl group is on carbon 2. If I number from the right, it would be carbon 3. And so once again, I have to number from the left. Having four carbons in my parent chain gives me a first name of but. The double bond gives me a last name of ene preceded by a 2, given that it starts on the second carbon. My one carbon substituent on carbon 2 gives me a prefix of 2-methyl. For a final name of 2-methyl-2-butene. When you have a pi bond that occurs in a cyclic compound, you treat it just like a linear molecule. However, when you number it, you have to ensure that both the first and second carbon of the double bond have consecutive numbers. Meaning, if I choose the top carbon holding the pi bond to be number 1, I have to continue counterclockwise so that the second carbon on the pi bond gets number 2. If instead I chose to go clockwise, the pi bond would have non-consecutive numbers of 1 and 5, which would be incorrect. Having 5 carbons in my parent chain gives me a first name of pent. Because it's a ring, I have to precede that with the word cyclo. A double bond between carbon 1 and 2 would give me 1 ene. However, since this is the only substituent on the molecule, the 1 will be understood and doesn't have to be written out. This gives me a final name of cyclopentene. When you have a ring with a pi bond and a substituent, the two carbons holding the pi bond get higher priority than an alkyl substituent. If I choose the top carbon to be number 1, I am forced to continue clockwise so that the second sp2 carbon gets the number 2, and this gives the methyl substituent a number 4. Having 6 carbons in my chain gives me the first name of hex, 
the ring gives me a prefix of cyclo. Since the pi bond is highest priority, even though it occurs with carbon number one, it will be self-understood. The one carbon substituent occurs with carbon number four, giving me the prefix of 4-methyl for a final name of 4-methyl cyclohexene. When you have more than one double bond in your parent chain, you treat the naming in the same way and simply place the prefix di before the word in to show that you have two double bonds. Using this example, we start by highlighting the parent chain and numbering from the left because the pi bond occurs at the first carbon. Having seven carbons in my molecule gives me a first name of hept. Given that I have two double bonds, I get the last name of diene to show that I have two pi bonds, and I precede with the numbers 1, 4, because you number the first carbon for each pi bond rather than the second. A single carbon substituent on carbon 3 gives me the prefix of 3-methyl, for a final name of 3-methyl-1,4-heptadiene. We'll end this video with an interesting example. It appears that we have a double bond coming off the parent chain as a substituent. However, if this is my parent chain, I can't simply count one sp2 carbon without its partner, and so the actual parent chain has to include both carbons of the double bond and then the rest of the chain. I start numbering from the first carbon of the double bond for a total of five carbons, which gives me a first name of pent. Since the double bond occurs at carbon one, I have the last name of one ene. And once again, I have a one carbon substituent on carbon two, giving me the prefix of two methyl. This gives me a final name of two methyl, one pentene. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.